Hi everyone, welcome to Adventures with Raven and Rowley. I'm Raven and this is Rowley. For the past three months we've been living full-time in our 6x12 converted cargo trailer in the Nevada desert. I'm pretty much finished making modifications to it for the time being. Things like painting the exterior and painting a decal may or may not happen, you know. Rowley plays and sleeps and eats. Um, and that's pretty much his day. Although sometimes he warns me when things happen, people come by. Anyway, mine is probably about the same, sleep, eat, and um, play. For the previous five years, we've lived in an RV full time, a class A, and then a fifth wheel. I still have the fifth wheel. Uh, it's in storage. Last week I talked about the various methods I use to cook. This week I'll talk about my love-hate relationship with this desert. If you're curious, please join us on this journey and continue to watch. Let me tell you, sunrises and sunsets are a waste of time. You get addicted to watching them. Before you know it, three hours is wasted on each one. I mean, it's just amazing. Six hours gone from a possible productive day. And after all, your eight hours is wasted on sleep at night. I mean, you know, come on. And siestas. Siestas waste another two hours. You know, that leaves eight hours in the middle of the day, the hottest part of the day, to do something productive. It's just terrible. <sighs> Chocolate and ice cream melt way too easily. Uh, ice drinks get hot way too fast. I mean, not that you can really keep ice in the first place, <laughs> you know. It's really hot in the summer, in the afternoon. I mean, it's been up to 108, you know, 109, even 101 feels hot. You know, you sweat a lot. Either whether you're sleeping or waking, you sweat a lot. So you're forced to do things to keep cool, like sit in an air conditioning or go to your favorite store and push a cart around and try not to spend money to get cool, you know. You can sit in your car and turn on your air conditioning so you can cool down your core temperature. Or sit in, like I do, sit in front of a, a swamp cooler with the fan blowing on you too. Really effective. It's really effective. Or you could go swimming, you know, uh, in town. <laughs> Not in the desert, okay? It's, it's this heat is really counterproductive to getting things done. And siestas and naps are absolutely necessary, you know. So you waste a lot of time, a lot of time. So you can't cook inside because it's too hot. So you have to resort to sandwiches and salads or maybe barbecues or you have to use a solar cooker if you want to eat something hot, you know, or if you don't do a barbecue. Some foods have to be cooked that taste great as cold leftovers like fish. Personally, I like cold fish. Uh, chicken, any kind of chicken. Spaghetti, spaghetti after the sauce has melded in, you know, overnight and it's been in the refrigerator. Yeah, cold spaghetti is the thing. And then of course, as most college people, people who have attended college or maybe not, cold pizza. Cold pizza is excellent. And then there's baked mac and cheese. That's really good too. So you could do that in the solar cooker and then stick it in the refrigerator and have it the next day. Oh, mm. Another bad thing about being out here in this desert, you have to go to bed early. You have to get up early to avoid the heat. So you have to go to bed early. In order to get things done, you have to go to bed early. You know? And if you don't you can always try again tomorrow. It's a movable rock, better known as a tortoise. It's just kind of sitting there. 
it's not moving. I think it lives over in this hole over there. I have to go over there to show you that hole. Yeah, I think it lives there. It hasn't moved. See if I can get a close up of him. Get low. I just want to see your face. I see your face. There you go. Looks pretty healthy to me. Okay, I'll leave you alone. You can go back your morning. Sandy said she heard a strange clicking, whining noise, like something trying to run, but the battery's almost dead. Finally, she said she saw it was a turtle trying to mate with another one. It was in the ravine behind her van. Out here in this, this part of the desert, the wind picks up in the afternoon. It's one of my favorite things, actually, is the wind in the afternoon. It brings a nice cool breeze, uh, but it also brings dust, and dust covers everything, absolutely everything. Um, so you're constantly, well, I don't. <laughs> Most people constantly clean and sweep and carry on. You know, after a while, you, you realize you're in the desert, it's going to be dusty, you know, but the wind feels great in the afternoon, just about when you really need it. Uh, I don't know. And one of the scary things, I mean, I don't, I don't know why I can't stay light all night, but it's really dark at night. I mean, really, really, really dark, except when the moon is full. And when the moon is not full, and there's no moon, for instance, at all, it gives this, the sky gives this false illusion of light when the stars come out and the town lights come on, you know, you think, oh, you could see where you're going, but you can't see where you're going. And the ground here is made of a stuff called caliche, mostly rocks. Considering this ground here, it's amazing that the animals can burrow into it. That the animals can burrow into it, it's amazing. Let's see. This ground, this earth here, it's called Caliche. Very rocky. The rocks are very loose. See? Very loose. It's very hard to farm, very hard to dig, and it's hard to walk on. Okay. I tell you though, the primary thing that I really don't like is flies. Now, I know you get flies everywhere, but I have a hate relationship with flies, period. Because they buzz around your ears and they're in your face and they get in your food and they, they you know, flies are terrible people, you know? At least that's my opinion. They probably think that they're beautiful, you know? Anyway, the flies seem to show up when the register the vegetation is rotting after a rain. Things like when the the yucca trees are are rotting in the middle. And the yucca. Look how green it's becoming on the ends. I think that the middle parts die back so that it helps collect water. 
to keep the plant alive. See the middle? It's full of organic material. This is a beautiful plant. Otherwise, it's a wonderful thing to sit outside early in the morning and late in the evening and waste some hours. You know, waste a lot of hours sitting out here staring at the mountains, <laughs> staring at the sky, you know. Anyway, the other bugs eat the flies, dragonflies in particular, and there seem to be a lot of dragonflies around here. You know, I'm not totally cut off from society. I mean, I realize I'm a hermit. That's just the way I am. People tell me what's going on in the world. All of the politics, who's killing who, that kind of good stuff, you know. And then there are our crazy town neighbors, you know. I mean, the sheriff came up here a couple of days ago wanted to know if I heard screaming. There isn't a thing out here, <laughs> you know. But later on in the day, one of my neighbors came up to give me a warning about another man who was a neighbor who attacked him with a lead pipe or with a metal pipe. Uh, he said the guy was crazy. As it turns out, the same crazy guy has a habit of walking through the desert. And he carries a blue umbrella. And he came over a cup uh, yesterday, came over yesterday and asked if I had any water. He had left the house with not enough water. It went too far in the desert and it was too hot in the day. And he said, well, you know, if you need anything, come on down, I'm in the place down the road here. <clears throat> So, I guess you have to keep your eyes open. As I said, I'm not totally cut off from society. But let me tell you about the land. The problem is the land is and isn't mine. Now, I'm staying on BLM land, that's the Bureau of Land Management, and it's public land, which means that I'm a public, I own it, right? But this public land belongs to 329.5 million people. That's as of 2020. Now, there are 640 million acres is owned by the federal, well, owned by the federal government or held by the federal government. And since I asked Google for public lands, it came up with 640 million acres. So I used this number in my calculation. That leaves me owning 1.942 acres. The big problem is, I just don't know where that 1.942 acres is so that I could use it, you know, so that I could go live on it, that kind of thing. Um, and they're not saying anywhere that I could find which was my 1.942 acres. So I'm squatting for a while. I mean, any one of those 300 million people could say, you're sitting on my land, you know? And in order to ensure that my land is my land, I have to buy it. Can you believe that? I have to pay taxes. I have to conform to various and sundry codes, like I have to, to put in a septic sewer system. So, I'm looking for land in Mojave, Arizona. I wouldn't mind staying in Nevada, but you can't um, haul water. It's illegal to haul water to a residence in Nevada. So, I'm looking for land in Mojave, Arizona. 
As I believe in the law of attraction, let me tell you what I'm looking for. Owner financed land, low or no down payment, one to two acres, maybe two plus acres, actually two plus acres would be nice. It has to be zoned agricultural rural because I may want to raise goats again. It has to have decent maintained roads with no easement. Road frontage would be good. And I would love trees. I don't know how many trees I could find in Arizona in the desert, but trees or large bushes. There's large bushes out here. Why not? Large bushes or even grasses like prairie grasses. A stream nearby or a river uh, that I have access to would be good, but I don't want it on my property. Okay. It's got to be not in a flood zone. We've been having a lot of those lately. I'm not crazy about snow. I did the New Hampshire thing, okay? No HOAs, POAs, uh, and it has to have water. I have to have water and mineral rights, okay? Nobody else can have those rights except me, the landowner. And last but not least, that I have to be able to live on it in an RV. You'd be surprised how many places, how many properties restrict the use of an RV on your own land, which is what I mean, you know, you got to conform. So overall, I love it out here. I hate the flies the most, but I suppose they are necessary to life. I mean, there's a lot of different kinds of flies, you know, and they do their thing. Everything else is okay. Everything else actually is great. Uh, and it's very livable. And it's a joy. The Rowley Report. Someone told me a while ago that he was a Chihuahua mixed with a German short hair. I hope his father was a Chihuahua. <laughs> you know, because I can't imagine his mom giving birth to him. The rest of the title is Pointer, German short hair Pointer. I was in Walmart this past week and a woman said she looked, he looked like a, a short bird dog. I said, why? Okay. So I looked up bird dogs and first on the list, the first on the list was German short hair Pointer. When I looked at him going through the brush, the brush, he acts like a bird dog, his nose to the ground like he's trying to flush something out of the out of the area. And being a raven, he picked me six months before I took him home, came over, licked my fingertips, which was really strange. Uh, licked my fingertips and then backed off like he was scared, afraid of me. But I took him home. He was good. At the time he did that, I'd, I wasn't looking for a dog. Well, I was kind of saying, yeah, I think I should get a dog, but not really looking. But he picked me. There he is. There he is. See how green things are becoming. See how the bush. So thanks for watching and thanks for your support. See you next Friday at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Take care of you and yours and blessed be.